Hello and welcome to Namaste Thunder Bay. My name is Kelly Rooney and I'm here to guide you in a 25 minute uh, yoga practice. And today I wanted to do something special with you. I listen to what people are working on or struggles that they're having and then I try and tailor yoga classes to address those issues or problems or challenges that people seem to be experiencing. And one that I hear often is, I feel so tired. I feel drained, I'm exhausted. So I thought today it might be really nice to explore how we can use yoga to build our energy and have energy that when you do the yoga, it brings energy into your body, it makes you feel light in your mind and calm and centered, but with energy that's flowing throughout the day beyond that. Or if you do it midday to get a, a boost, that's great too. Just know that you can practice yoga and certain poses put together in a sequence can really bring energy into your body that will sustain. I also thought um, as a way of centering into our bodies, we could do a breathing practice today. Um, I want to focus on Nadi Shodhana and the way that we do that is you can just come into a comfortable seated position. It can be on your yoga mat, it can be on a chair and then bring up your hand. I use my right hand and I take my peace fingers and drop them down into my palm. Then I'm going to be using the side of my thumb to block my right nostril and I'm going to use the pad of my ring finger to block my left nostril. Some people like to hook their pinky over top. You can try that if that works for you. I don't usually do it that way so I'm going to do it the way that feels comfortable with my hand. So keeping a nice straight spine Bring your thumb to the edge of your right nostril, blocking the nostril, breathe in through the left. Block the left nostril, let it out through the right. Breathe back in through the right. Block the nostril, let it out through the left. Continue that rhythm. Nice, long, smooth breath. There can be a slight pause at the top of your inhale. When you come to the point where you are blocking your left nostril, let all the air out through the right. And breathe back in and out only using your right nostril. You can release the practice and breathe naturally. When you are doing the alternate nostril breathing, bringing it in through one side, out through the other, that helps to balance and reset your central nervous system. And then when you block the left nostril at the end and breathe in and out only through the right side, that helps to boost energy into your body. So if you're ever needing a little pick-me-up, that's something that you can do. Alternately, if you are trying to find a little calm or you're having insomnia, you can keep the right nostril blocked at the end and breathe in and out only through the left side to bring everything down into a calming space. So now that we've got some breathing, we're in our bodies and we're ready to move, let's get up onto our mat and we'll start with some sun salutations to warm ourselves up. You can come to the top of your mat with your arms at your sides. And as you inhale, sink your hips back into a chair that's slightly too far away. Arms are forward, the biceps are up by the ears, palms are facing one another and fold forward. Step back into plank and then take a breath in. You can lower your knees down if you need to and lower down slowly through chaturanga. Inhale up for cobra. Exhale coming up and back to downward dog. In your downward dog, inhale your left foot up into the air for three-legged dog and bring it forward and plant it close to your hands, letting your right toes turn out slightly to the side. Bring your torso up and the hands come up overhead, biceps by the ears, palms facing one another. You're now in your warrior one stance. Nice deep breath in, 
Come forward, plant your hands down and step your foot back to plank. Extra breath in and lower down through Chaturanga. Inhale up to Cobra. Exhale back to Downward Dog. Inhale your right foot up into the air. Bringing it forward, plant it close to your hands. Let your left foot turn out slightly to the side. Bring your torso up, arms overhead, biceps by the ears. Deep breath in and come forward. Plant your hand, bring your foot back to plank. Extra breath in and lower down slowly through Chaturanga. Inhale up for Cobra. Exhale back to Downward Dog. You can hop or walk your feet toward your hands. Inhale, coming up to a flat back, halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, sinking your hips back into that chair that's too far away. And then press your palms together and straighten up to a standing position. That should get your body pumping and all the blood moving, and again, energizing in its way of doing things. We're going to do a series of movements and each one of the poses is an energizing pose. So I will run you through um, a flow series. We'll start off by inhaling the hands up overhead. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale up to a flat back and exhale coming down to plank. In your plank, bring your hips up and back for downward dog. In your downward dog, inhale your left foot up into the air and then bend it at the knee so your foot is coming toward your bottom. You can stretch and breathe into this variation of three-legged dog. And then pivot forward and plant your foot down close to your hands and start to sink into your hips, lowering your right knee down and relaxing the foot. You can stay with your fingertips on the mat in this low lunge. Or if it feels good in your body, you can peel your hands up and bring them up toward the ceiling, opening your heart toward the sky. And if you lose your balance like I do, just be kind and gentle in your thoughts to yourself. And then come forward and plant your hands down. Curl your toe under. We're lifting up. We're going to move back onto our right heel and bring our nose toward our knee. Sinking the left knee into a bend, bringing the body up into a high lunge. Again, you want to find your balance and bring your hands up overhead. Again, palms are facing one another. Coming forward, plant your fingertips down and step your foot back to downward dog. We're back where we started. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Inhale your right leg up into the air and bend it at the knee. Again, stretching into it, opening the hip up. Coming forward, we're going to plant the foot down close to the hands. Sink the left knee down onto the mat, relax the foot. Again, you can keep your fingertips down on the mat if you need to. If it feels good in your body, bring the hands up overhead, opening the chest up toward the sky. Coming forward, plant your fingertips down, come up onto your toes on the left foot, press up and back and bring your nose toward your knee. Good. 
coming in, uh, putting a bend into the right leg again so that the knee is over top of the ankle. Coming into your high lunge, bringing your hands up overhead, biceps by the ears, palms facing one another. Coming forward, we're going to plant the hands down, back to plank this time. And then we're going to lower down slowly through Chaturanga. You can lower your knees down if you need to. You want to bring the body down to the mat slowly. Moving your hands back towards your waist, plant your hands down on the mat and stretch up into an easy cobra or upward dog if you would like to lift the thighs off of your mat. Lowering down, let's bring our hips back toward our heels for child's pose. In your child's pose, you want to feel your body compressing over your thighs, big toes touching. You can keep your knees together in this pose, or you can take them out to the sides and settle down in between them. Really focusing on your breath. Noticing it coming in and out of your body. Pressing back up onto your hands and knees and lowering to downward dog. You can begin to walk your feet toward your hands and allow yourself to roll up slowly one vertebrae at a time. Now that energizing flow um, obviously is a great workout and it gives you an opportunity to get all the blood pumping and those um, particular poses are designed to boost your energy levels and it's definitely working. A nice thing to do to keep your practice interesting is to have a challenge pose and um, a challenge pose can be any pose that is challenging for you. So I'm going to share one today. If it's not the right challenge pose for you, you can work on a pose that's challenging for you just to keep you motivated and interested and keep you on track with your practice. It's sometimes hard to get onto the mat on a regular basis. So I'd like to share with you another arm balance. Arm balances are a favorite of mine and I'm going to focus on one called side crow today. So. I will share with you the things that you can do and if you come all the way into the pose that's great and if you'd like to stop at any point in time please do so or work on the challenge pose that works.